Hello everybody, this is another episode of the Nutrition Club. It's provided by Community Health Programs. My name is Hannah Patterson and welcome to my kitchen. So today's recipe is going to be a frittata. So a frittata is basically an egg mixture with a variety of vegetables just baked right in the oven. It sounds kind of like a quiche, probably what some of you are thinking, like isn't, it, isn't that a quiche? Well it's not because a quiche has a kind of like a pie crust and then you put the egg mixture in it. So this is basically like a crustless quiche, also known as a frittata. <laughs> so today's frittata is going to be made with Greek yogurt. Typically it's made with some kind of heavy cream or milk, something like that. But I'm going to be using Greek yogurt just because I like the protein content a little more. And then I also made sure that I got a non-fat Greek yogurt so that I can try to control the fat just a little bit. And then also for our cheese, I chose a reduced fat feta cheese. It's going to be really great. And then my vegetables are kind of a Greek style. It's spinach, onion, tomato, and mushroom. It's going to be awesome. And then on the side, because we do need some kind of carbohydrates with every meal, because it's important to have consistent carbohydrates when you're a diabetic or possibly pre-diabetic. So I chose a whole wheat bread on the side and I'm going to toast it and then spread it with not butter, but avocado. It's actually really tasty. I love avocado toast. So that's gonna be on the side. And then I'm gonna make all of this frittata in my cast iron pan. I love these things. These are great because you can, you can basically use them on the stove top and then throw them right in the oven and it's not going to damage the pan at all. It's really great. And then I'm also going to be showing you a video later on on how to care for a cast iron pan for those of you that do have one. They're pretty great. You should always have a cast iron pan in your kitchen. All right, so let's get started. So to start off, I'm going to be cutting up my vegetables. So, firstly, I have to make sure that everything's nice and washed. So I have all these washed, but I wanted to show you how to properly clean a mushroom. So typically people just rinse them off and throw them uh, in some water and stuff, but the really proper way is um, using a wet, damp rag. So by using a wet, damp rag, I just rub the top off, this way, I'm not losing any of the nutrients that can easily be absorbed by that water or released into that water. And we want to get all of the nutrients we can out of these mushrooms. So that's why we properly clean them with a nice little rag. And see how they're dirty they are? There's a lot of dirt comes off with this. And then what I'm going to do is take all the stems off of my spinach, just like this, and then cut these in halves or quarters, maybe quarters. And I'm going to be cutting up my onion as well into small pieces. I'm personally using a red on onion just because I already had uh, used up half of this and I don't want to waste it, so I'm using that up. So. So now you see that I have all my mushrooms sliced up, onions, everything. And all the stems off of my spinach used up. Looks great. But I'm going to be putting that to the side for right now. We're going to do the next part. Let's see here. So what I'm going to do is take six eggs and crack them in my bowl. Just move my spinach out of the way. Six eggs and crack them in my bowl. <clears throat> now, most people crack them on the side of the bowl. I crack them on a flat surface. That way, you don't have to worry about any shells getting in there. And then, a cool trick is, say, oops, I got a shell in there. Yeah, throw that in there. Oops, I got a shell in there. It's okay, use the eggshell to pick up the eggshell. It's crazy. 
because if you were to use a um, spoon or your finger or anything like that, for some reason it is so difficult to grab that eggshell. But using the eggshell itself seems to work really well. There we go. And here's six. my hands really quick okay so now I've got my egg break all these yolks I'm gonna give her a good whisk before we add this yogurt now a good way to hold a whisk is just like you can hold a pencil I hold my pencil like this and the point is not to stir it, but to almost fold it in a quick way that gets air in there. So it's kind of like little circles, but to the side, so you can see the egg kind of jumps up and folds over. Get some air in there. Awesome. And now I'm going to add some of this yogurt. I want to make sure I get that all nice and combined. It gets really thick from that Greek yogurt, but that's okay. And now we're going to start some of the fry. So, just to let you know, I actually preheated my oven before I started cutting up all my veggies and stuff. That way, it would be nice and warm by the time I need to get my, my whole frittata right in the oven. And I started at uh, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So I start there. And then now, what I'm going to do is add some oil to the pan. Never start it. There we go. Maybe a medium, medium high heat. And add just a tiny bit of olive oil. So first I'm gonna let that heat up in my pan. The one downfall to a cast iron pan is that it doesn't cool down really well. So you can go and heat it up really high and then you want to go and turn it down. It holds a lot of heat. It's going to be staying pretty hot. It doesn't cool down very as fast as most other metals do. So do that and then I'm going to add my onion. I'm going to let that saute. brown up a bit. Okay, so it has sauteed up quite a bit. It's a nice color there. So what I'm going to do is add my mushrooms and tomatoes. And I'm also going to add my spinach. And kind of let that wilt. It seems like a lot of spinach right now, but trust me, it's going to go way down. So why I chose spinach was because it's packed with vitamin K, which is really good for uh, bone health and development. So it's really important. And it also helps with blood clotting too. And then it's also a good source of folate and iron, which can help with anemia, which is something pregnant women definitely need to uh, be careful with because it can be very easy to become anemic because you're producing all of that blood for a whole other human being. All right, I've got 
that my frittata here is gorgeous. Look at that. A good way to know that it is done is the sides here. Look at the sides here. They're kind of a little separated from the side, just a little bit. You can tell that there's more browning on the side here, which is great. Awesome. So I'm going to cut a little sliver here. All right. So the reason I didn't stick with um, doing, what do you call it? Doing the um, eggs with like just egg and egg yolk, extra egg yolk, or doing just overall an egg white frittata. Uh, what I did was, ooh, look at that. Oh, so distracted right now. Whew. Let's put it over here like this. Oh, that is nice. So the reason I didn't do the just egg whites, which a lot of people think is healthier because um, supposedly the yolks have saturated uh, fats and uh, cholesterols and that sort of thing. But the thing is, is that there's a lot more in yolks than people realize. There's uh, vitamin D, E, A, B6, B12, iron, zinc, there's uh, monounsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, as well as the saturated. And then egg whites, they really are a lower fat and they have more pro they have protein as well, but altogether a whole egg is better than just doing egg yolk because you're missing out on all the really important nutrients you can find in an egg yolk. So, I actually, while it was baking in the oven, I toasted some toast and added my avocado there. So avocado is really, really great substitute for butter. It's really great. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode's uh, Nutrition Club recipe. And I hope you stay tuned for some more. Thank you. Bye.